When you open a radio show, TV show, you got to talk about, you got to set the table for everybody at 10 o'clock right out of the gate. We're going to have uh, General Manager Jason Bottrell on, and uh, he joins us now. So uh, what's up, Bots? We're talking James Bond. Wow, you guys got the uh, hot items right off the bat uh, today. That's good to hear. You know what? You know what's funny is uh, we get you on now. I think about it. I was going to say, well, are you a Bond fan? But you know what? Ralph Kruger would make one hell of a James Bond. I, I completely agree with you. He's, hey. you know, he got that international flair to him and stuff. I, th- I agree with you on that one. I, sure. I think he would be like a good James Bond candidate. You just see the way he looks behind the bench, just dialed right in and dapper. He as can looks be. perfect in his suits, his tie. I don't even know how he ties his tie so perfectly. <laughs> That's what we I need. I, I need it in, in the off season. Uh, he'll have to sit down with me and help me out in that uh, category for That's sure. Right. Hard, a hard hitting uh, analysis here, bots. So that's where we watch our games. We worry about the ties the coaches are wearing and everything. We don't worry about the plays that are made. How are you? How was the All Star break? It was good, you know. And, and uh, like I think it's a, uh, I think it's a great break actually for our players and everyone. Uh, you know, you look at the Christmas break you get. It's just so short, and the holidays are uh, are so chaotic. This allows players to get away. Um, get refocused, re-energized for the last part of the season here. And, you know, what I've seen is just the development of the players, too. Now, you, you know, Craig, Craig's back in your day, uh, PD or Craig, like, you take seven days off, it'd be horrendous. You know, guys would be terrible. But uh, I think guys take care of themselves so much better nowadays. And uh, uh, Ralph and myself have been very impressed with the uh, effort and practice the last couple of days. I think our execution took a lot of big jump from uh, day two from day one. And, uh, and that will be the challenge here tonight against Ottawa. Um, you know, I think we'll be obviously the fresher team than Ottawa with Ottawa playing last night. Uh, but I think Ottawa's execution will probably be a little bit better just at getting that first game out of the way. So it'll be important for us to you know, bring energy right off the bat to start the, the game here tonight, but uh, really try to focus on our execution. Uh, uh, wh- I, why us? Why did you have to center us out? I think uh, he I think he knows us pretty well. Is what, what he's about you? To say. What, how did you feel uh, after like, a week I, off? I put myself in that in that same boat. If I took seven days off in the middle of the year <laughs> from skating, oh, it would have take it would well three weeks yeah, it I, takes you three weeks three, it takes you to get back for sure. Or right, you know, you get back the first day, you'd have a groin pull or a, a hip issue type of thing, and the, you're out for a month. So, uh, uh, but these guys, the way they take care of their bodies now, and just the workouts and. Uh, you know, they came back in, 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 I thought, great spirits and uh, and did a great job in the last couple of days in practice. So looking forward to get, finally get back in the game situations here. Well, by no means do I want to make this interview about me, but I will tell you that looking back and what, what you just said, I can tell you that the reason why I felt so terribly when I came back, it wasn't the seven days off. It was what I did during during the seven, seven days, days off. And, and that's yeah. that's exactly where I feel like the game has changed the most before we get into some more in-depth stuff <laughs> is – and, and are the athletes that these players have become just even in the last 15 years? Oh, 100%. And, uh, you know, they're, they're always looking for the edge. They're always looking for something that can help them. And they're, they're continually asking us. They're continually asking other, uh, you know, other players in the league whenever someone has success, what are they doing, what training methods are there? They're, they're becoming extremely proactive in their own development. And, uh, you know, I think our group in general over the last couple of years has taken a big step in that direction. And then you bring in someone like Michael Froelich, uh, he's just a consummate pro. Uh, he's, you know, he's played in uh, you know, Stanley Cup finals, he's played in world championships. Um, just how he handles himself day in, day out as a veteran player, um, you know, I think those things are, are great sort of uh, learning experiences for our younger players. And now they're bringing that into their own routine. Um, speaking of development, it's, uh, you know, we've, we've got some young players on this team. Um, you know, a, a player like Casey Middlestat making the decision to, um, you know, put him down on the minors for a little while to allow him to play more minutes, get into um, some, some different situations that he may not have gotten up here in the, uh, in, in the NHL. Guys like Rasmus Dahlin, Yoki Harju, where, uh, where do you feel the development of some of these young guys are right now? Well, I think especially when you look at uh, someone like Casey, um, we, we certainly talked a lot about what, what to do with his development. And he, he can certainly play in the National Hockey League right now. Um, but I think it's more of a, along the lines of, of just surviving in the league. And we have high expectations for Casey. And I know Casey has high expectations for his own career. And I think just getting him into an environment where he is, has the opportunity to make a few more plays, continue to work on his game. And the thing that allowed us to have confidence in making this uh, move, too, was just the relationship that 
Chris Taylor developed with Ralph uh, while being up here um, earlier in the year. He knows, uh, Chris knows exactly what Ralph is looking for from Casey. Uh, I think uh, Chris also saw Casey in some of his best games of the year, whether it was the first game of the season against Pittsburgh or he had another strong game against L.A. at the start of the season. And then he also saw him when he struggled, and he knows the difference there. And I think that, uh, that knowledge and, uh, has helped uh, uh, Chris interact with Casey very well in Rochester and uh, you know we've been happy with his development over the last couple of weeks down there. What's the mission? We're joined right now on the line uh, with Jason Botcher, general manager of the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, game night tonight 7 p.m. at home uh, Ottawa in Buffalo here. Um, coming out of the break here uh, what is your mission between now and the end of the year? Well our mission for our, our team is to win tonight against Ottawa. And that has to be the focus. And that has to be, you know, I think Ralph's talked a lot about ever since the disappointing loss to Tampa Bay on New Year's Eve, uh, just getting our group refocused from a standpoint of, hey, trying to win two out of three games. You know, and that's not dictating whether you're automatically going to be in the playoffs or what, but it's going to give you at least give you a chance. And that's what sort of Ralph is focused in on the players from that element. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing is you try to look at, a, we certainly have to look from a management standpoint of a bigger picture, and so there will be decisions we have to make by the end of the month from that standpoint. Uh, but from our team focus and our just our individual, you know, day-to-day -day focus right now, it's, hey, what's the next game up? And we all know that we have, I believe, it's eight of the next nine games at home. Uh, we've also known that we've enjoyed, you know, one of the challenges we set to our team this year at the start of the year was to have a home ice presence. And I think overall we've done a pretty good job with that. And it's important that we continue that over the next couple of weeks here. But I think uh, when our team has played extremely well throughout the year, um, you know, it's because they've kept things small. They've looked at the small picture here and stuff. And I think Ralph has done a very good job with the group from that standpoint. You've said in a, a couple media scrum that, scrums that you're actively looking to, to make some moves. And does that ever stop? Is that ongoing? And I guess with the trade deadline coming up, how soon in advance do deals start to be made uh, for the trade deadline or how far in advance uh, might be another way to ask? Well, look, I think there's always uh, d dialogue going on uh, with different teams. It's just, uh, you know, you you're talking with the team, you feel you're close, and then they run into a couple of strings of injuries during games. And uh, I think during the break, uh, you know, uh, GMs get away from the teams a little bit, uh, have an opportunity to go through, you know, scouting means with their group and sort of really see what they're looking for, um, you know, for the, sort of the, the stretch run here now and stuff. So, um, you know, and, and look, you, you just look at some GMs in the past. They're certainly aggressive trying to get their deals done in January or the start of February. Um, others want to wait straight to the, the end of the, the, the deadline so, or close to the deadline. So you also under, have to understand sort of the GM that you are working with and what the, his sort of background is from that, that standpoint. But, uh, you know, we're, we're continuing to have a dialogue from that standpoint. And, you know, we did make the trade to bring in uh, Froelich. We've been very happy with what he's uh, added to our penalty kill situation. And we're excited to see now with Jeff Skinner coming back into our lineup tonight, um, just uh, that line of Skinner, Johansson, Froelich to see how – what chemistry they can develop as a group there, and uh, we'll see where what materializes. What is your is your main area of need? Um, is what I in particular what type of player are you looking for? Well, I think the or way is there one? Well, I think you know we've we've been very honest. We've continued to try to look at our forward group to try to um, improve that group. We feel we have some young players, but when you lose Sabaka, when you lose Tage Thompson for the year. Um, you're looking to try to, to add to that mix and stuff for sure. And uh, the, the development, you talked, we talked earlier a little bit just about the development of some of our younger defensemen. Uh, you know, when we were sitting here in the summer and making the trade for Henry Yoki Harju, we didn't have him, oh, this guy's going to be on our team for sure. And uh, he stepped up from that standpoint, and that's allowed us to have more depth from a defensive standpoint. And uh, the same thing with a, a player like Lawrence Pilot. Um, you know, it's a situation where we, he's, he's accomplished what we wanted to, for him to accomplish in the, in the American Hockey League. He's come up and played well. He deserves the opportunity to stay here right now and stuff. So when these players come into the mix, um, you know, it, adds, it gives us uh, more options here on defense. But, you know, what we're looking for is, is from, from a forward standpoint, um, I continue to think just, you know, finding more offensive uh, uh, skill, but also to just speed. You know, the way that uh, Ralph wants our players to play for on the forward check and tracking back, um, you know, if we can continue to, to improve our speed. But that's something that's, you know, it's going to be ongoing, whether it's, the, uh, you know, before the deadline, the summer. Um, that's something, just something that we're going to continue to work at. 
Um, Jason Botchel joining us here on the line. Bots, feel free. I know you're busy. I know you have a game day, so just tell us when you got to go. Um, otherwise, we'll keep you on until noon. That's, that's up to you. But, you know, I, one player I want to ask you about, obviously, I, I, I mean, I'd like to ask you about if there's any kind of preliminary talks with uh, Sam Reinhart. Um, but another player I'd like to ask you about, it, and, and I kind of feel like he was a – like a, a free acquisition in the off season is Curtis Lazar. And I, I know he, he's not like the, the saving grace. A lot of people might say, but I really liked his game. I really liked his style of play. And I'm wondering if, if uh, he's a guy that might be around for a while. Well, uh, your first conversation, or uh, first question in regards to Sam um, is look, obviously Sam is represented by Newport sports. We have quite a few clients uh, from Newport and keep those dialogues going very well. But what we've sort of believed is, Hey, let's, Let's have things continue to go here. Sam's a restricted free agent in the year. He's having a very strong year. Uh, let's keep the focus on just his play and, and moving from that standpoint. Uh, in regards to Curtis, what you know, we were excited about signing him on, on. I believe we signed him on July 1st last year, and brought him into the mix. Um, and what I like a lot about Curtis is just it, it shows what we're trying to strive for from a development standpoint here. It's, when you talk about development, everyone talks about your young players, such as you know Rasmus Dahlin or Casey Middlestadt. But it's also about a player like Curtis here, and uh, former first-round pick who sort of bounced through the league a little bit. Um, I thought he had a very strong training camp for us, um, and then came up uh, for uh, our, our Western road trip. Uh, got some feedback on what he can really improve on his game, and I thought he really worked on those elements in Rochester. So when he came back up. One, I thought his, his penalty killing was that much better. I thought his assertiveness around the net was that much better. I thought his work on his, on his face-offs were that much better. And that allowed him to, to get you know, into the lineup and, more importantly, gain Ralph's trust in those situations there. So I think he took that feedback to heart and really worked on his game. And uh, uh, he certainly has had, added, added an element to, to us uh, in a sort of a specific need there. Going back to <clears throat> the cap situation, I'm certainly not a capologist by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are very much like myself. I hear a lot about, you know, we're over the cap kind of right now and how that affects us for next year, the cap recapture. Can you, uh, you know, explain, you know, how you're going to try and work the cap, you know, to finish the end of the season or how that works? Well, right now, obviously, with uh, some of the players that we have on long-term injury, uh, the Pagulas have given us the opportunity to do a goal above the cap. We can, you know, it's great that you have the, that ability to uh, to go above through long-term injury, whether it was Matt Hunwick at the start of the season or Vladimir Sabaka, but you also have to have your ownership agree to, hey, take on the extra salary from that standpoint. So it allows you to go over the cap during the season and stay compliant from that standpoint. It's just where there could be an overage for next year is if performance bonuses are earned. So we have players such as Rasmus Dahlin and Henry Yoki Harju and um, before and Casey Middlestadt um, that could achieve uh, performance bonuses. If they achieve those performance bonuses, then that will come out of our cap for next year. So that's just something that we certainly have an, our eye on. And uh, you just we want to have as much flexibility from year to year and stuff from a cap situation. Well, bots, uh, I think we've long over uh, done our time with you. So appreciate your time. Did you do any scouting over the break? Did a little bit of scouting over the break. Also had a, you know, you always try to find the balance here with, uh, with my family and stuff too. So spend a couple of days with my family, which I certainly enjoyed. But uh, no, I've, what it has excited me is just, you know, the energy of our coaches coming back after the break and just how re-energized our players have been and stuff. And uh, now it's us for us to go out there and get results. You know, overall, I think we've played fairly well since the Christmas break, but there's still the little bit of, of now getting results. And uh, that's what I'm excited about, what this group could, could entail over the next couple of weeks here, starting here tonight against Ottawa. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the game. Did you make? Did you happen to make your way? I mean, this might be an assuming question. Did you happen to make your way down to uh, USA Arena at all? I have spent some some time at USA Arena. Uh, uh, just just I, wondering. I have my yeah. eye on a kid down there. <laughs> 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 Sounds good. Well, we I appreciate talking with you guys. Thank you very much for having me on here today, guys. Yeah, you got it. Thanks, Thanks Jason, Jason. Botchel, kind enough to join us here on a game day. Uh, Ottawa in town, seven o'clock puck drop. 